Friends, good day! In this video, I want to tell you about the historical volatility indicator. It is the most important indicator of option trading. I will tell you how to apply it, how to use it, and how to recognize undervalued or overvalued options. Without knowledge about this parameter, you simply cannot trade options. Be sure to watch this video to the end, because in the second half of the video I will talk about the historical volatility indicator at the AE desktop terminal. But I will start the video from the AE web terminal. There is a stock chart where you can open a chart of any futures. And at the bottom we see indicators of historical volatility, red and green. The red one is set in this line, HV window. And the green one is the HV window 1. The historical volatility indicators at the AE terminal are correct. They have been proof checked and tested. The simplest indicators like open or close type do not work. They are useless and show incorrect information. How to use the indicator at the AE web terminal? First you need to choose a time frame. I have a time frame of 60 minutes selected at the moment. I can choose another one. I need this time frame so that I can see the changes in the historical volatility of Bitcoin futures and use it to evaluate options. For example, the next monthly series. Why do I use 24 and 72? 60 is a unit of time, 24 is the number of hours. Hence, I can see information for a day. The red line is the one day volatility, right now this value is 34. And you also see here what it was in the past. 72 is the historical three day volatility. It is marked in green and it's slower. I can see on the chart that volatility started to rise last night. A couple of days ago volatility dropped to 10. Trading has been quiet. But as you can see recently there was a move and rise in volatility happened. Before that we saw a volatility level of 40, but the average is now somewhere around 30. The 3 day volatility is almost 20, 22. Now let's look at the options. If options are trading at a higher volatility than historical volatility, then they are overvalued. If they are trading at lower than historical volatility, then they are undervalued. Let's take some monthly series as an example, and we see that options at the money are trading at a volatility of 35. Now let's look at the historical volatility chart. It's somewhere around 30 here. We can see here the data for 5 days, for 10 days, so let's choose 10 days. To do this we enter the value 240, and we can see that the 10 day volatility is 28. In short, if we're interested in options that expire in two weeks, we need a longer period of historical volatility. If the options expire in one week, then short time frames will suffice. Once again, the 10 day volatility is 27 or 28. This means that the volatility of these monthly options is significantly overvalued. Probably because some events are expected, volatility is expected to rise. This is something to consider as well. Maybe there will be an acceptance of Bitcoin ADFs or something else. But of course we can't look into the future and we don't know what might happen. Once again, in this chart you can look at different volatility periods, compare them and make decisions accordingly. Let me remind you that volatility is the changeability of the price. It can indicate growth or fall. Another small thing. You can look at IV not necessarily at the volatility chart, but it is displayed in the options board as well. I think it is very convenient and this point was taken into account during the development of the terminal, so that a trader could compare data in one window and make decisions about selling or buying. For example, now I put the mouse on the bid of put options of strike 26 and we can immediately see what its volatility is, 34.7. Clicking on the mouse button immediately opens a quote window where we can make a trade. And now we go to the desktop terminal of AE Exchange. Here too there is a volatility chart that shows the volatility of all futures. Here at the bottom we see a red line. It is an indicator of historical volatility. 
In this case, we have chosen a time frame of 15 minutes. This is a Bitcoin chart, but with a different time frame, a shorter one. In here, in the settings, we can go in and change the parameters. If, for example, the trading session is not 24-7, here we can determine the size of trading sessions in minutes. For example, on the Chicago exchange, the duration of the trading session will be shorter. And here, in this line, the parameter 96 is selected. Why? Because there are 1440 minutes in a day, where there are 96 periods of 15 minutes each. Here we can also see that a couple of days ago there was a significant decrease in volatility, but then there was a significant increase and we see volatility around 30. Here we can also compare by opening the volatility chart. Let's add some options in there. Refresh. And we have opened the volatility curve. The functionality here is the same as in the web terminal. You can compare, open a buy and sell window and so on, and make a decision according to historical volatility and the events and factors you know about. Or we can do it another way. In the options board, instead of the point type, choose the volatility type. And now all the bid and ask prices are filtered by volatility. And if we look at options in the money at strike 26, 26 and a half, we see a volatility of 35. Historical volatility is somewhere around 30. And if the decision is made, by clicking twice on the option, you can proceed with a trade. Options trading is impossible without estimating the historical volatility, because options trading is trading the volatility of an asset. And this is a tool that every option trader should have. And I think that's it. I advise you to work with this tool yourself to make it easier to understand. If you liked this video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments. I wish you all the best and successful options trading.